Good morning, ladies. This is Paula back to do a simple project today, which a lot of you may have already done, but it's new for me. And I thought there might be other people who would feel like it's new for them. Okay, I'm going to get started. Basically, what it is, is an envelope with a window cut out. And, and then I just decorated, you know, with like a little heart and a couple different blue ribbons. I What I was doing when I decided to do this was this paper right here was uh, packaging. And I wanted this particular blue. So, I've, I'm going to flip it over. I just added some coffee stain paper to the back and a little ribbon um, decoration here. And, and then just slid it back in my package. Now, you want to be gentle with around here, unless there's some way you can think of to make it stronger. But I figured it wasn't that big of a deal. And so, I did coffee stain my envelope. I, I try to always do that and then ink them. And I inked this after I covered the back. So, if you wanted this to be more, um, how do you say it? Um, I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit. If you wanted it to be more um, decorative than that, you could add other things to it to make, to make it look a little more exciting. You know, like even something dimensional if you have room in your journal or whatever you're using. Uh, but I was just going to give you an example here. Um, let's see. Now, obviously, this might not be what you want. But if you were trying to focus on this card, which is a little bird. Or maybe a butterfly. You know anything a photo um, you probably if you took the envelope apart you could probably even add a window make a shaker card um, there's a lot of options for doing this my mind's a little cheerier but I'm working on an album that I'm doing in um, pinks and greens primarily but a little bit of blue and so I thought I'd throw something blue in there. I'm still not positive it's going in. So we'll just see. Okay. Um, so let's get started. I'm What I'm going to do this time is like an old vintage. But I'm going to bring this up and let you see. Now when you take this out. Um, this is what the back will look like when you're done. So you can see that it's going to be fragile. That's what it looks like on that side. And if you've really stained it, like I need to add some glue to that, which I will do, um, you need to re-secure your envelope if you've tea stained it because it does weaken them a little bit. So I'm going to set this aside and we'll get started on the next one. Now, I what, I didn't really know what I was going to be doing. I'm going to move my papers aside, too, because they're in my way. Um, I just grabbed a bunch of stuff and decided, you know, that I could um, try to figure out um, how to cut this envelope. Basically, I just eyeballed it. I'm going to go out a little bit because I think... We might be a little too zoomed in. Okay, so you want your flap to be up when you do this. And I just took, you could see right here where I cut. I mean, you know, this isn't gonna last forever, but this is just a little piece of cardboard that came out of, I don't know, anything. Maybe pantyhose. That's not true because I haven't wore pantyhose in years. But you know what I'm saying, just any kind of um, 
cardboard or anything hard, like a little cutting board if you have a small mini one or something. Um, anything to keep it from cutting through the back of the, the envelope. Now, I didn't use a pencil. You can use a pencil if you would like. I, my main goal was just to kind of center it. And I, if I can get away with not measuring, I do. If I, I can, you know, not have to use my ruler for that day, that's great. <laughs> um, I'm going to see if I'm getting it straight here, though. Mm, that's good enough. Maybe up a little bit there. Now, I'm going to show you, you know, well, you know, I'm not. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. I was going to tell you that you can draw around this with... A pencil first now the time I don't do that I could mess up but we just start over um, you know secure this uh, cardboard on top this is a cardboard that I want the window size to be so I'm just using it like a template and if I hold it down and just cut you want to be up against the cardboard and you want a certain amount of pressure you know here and see I've already cut crooked but let's see if we can fix it enough for at least the video and just hold on to it as you're turning it remember to put enough pressure I had to go back the first time and um, cut around it again because it wasn't enough to cut the window out because I was afraid you know if I put a whole lot of pressure down that it might um, cut through the cardboard because it really wasn't all that thick now you can see that I made a little bit of a mistake there I got off my uh, line but I'll try to fix that let's see if it will lift out ah oh, perfect this time and then you got a little bit of scrap tea paper tea stain paper now you can see right here, so I'm going to pull this cardboard out, and you'll see that it didn't cut through, but this is going to bug me if I don't fix it, so I just kind of tore it off there, and I'm just going to get a small pair of scissors and just eyeball it to fix it, and they don't have to be perfect. As I always say in every one of my videos, I noticed you don't have to be perfect. It's just a junk journal embellishment or whatever it is you're doing. You know, some of the products I demonstrate you can do use for scrapbooking or whatever. Still not quite there, but I'm getting there. I just don't want to cut a big hole at the side. Okay. We're going to make that good enough. So there we go. There's our flap. Now, you know the next thing you always do is ink your envelope. And so that's what we're going to do real fast. Now, I'm not going to go crazy and ink it while we're on video, but I am going to ink the front so you can see the difference. Now, you, you will need to ink the inside of your window the best you can. I just kind of lift it out with one finger and just give it a little bit of ink. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I said it didn't have to be perfect. That's all right. It's true. Okay. meaning to do this same video you know I I uh, had thought about doing this before and um, I of course haven't but it just turned out for this custom order that I could and again you would ink the back but we're not going to for time's sake okay all right, we'll be using that again whenever we decide what we want to use here for 
the inside. I wanted to use, uh, I'm pulling everything over, I'm sorry. I don't wanna use that. Let's see. I, I like this little vintage girl and I have, I don't know why I have two sizes, but I do. You see, she's cute. I don't really like all of that. So I may try to cover that up. Let's try this. And I thought about, but I think this is too big for the envelope and I don't know that cutting it down would look that great. So, uh, let's see. Oh, here's, this, here's one that didn't have all the blue. I don't really care about that. This is just an old Project Life card. And it was in a pile of, um, oh, look at this. I got it perfect. Maybe because I thought about what I was going to do. I did on this portion because I didn't want to turn the camera on and it not work. So, I just am going to mat it after I ink it. I'm going to mat it with this little. Now, I like the back of this. So, instead of adding the tea stained paper to the back of this, I'm going to just keep the Project Life card. Okay? Now, if I didn't want to do that, well, you know what? I think I'm not going to do that because I, I really need to use some different colors. So, um, oh, that pink doesn't look good with that. There's only two colors that I kind of like that. And I like that, that this is some scraps I have had that's one side's got rounded corners and one side doesn't so hmm the, the key to this is to get it in the right position where when you put it into the envelope you have enough border on this side to keep her from sliding all the way down now I didn't um, <laughs> obviously we just uh, picked out or just cut out this window so I kind of have to measure holding her in my hand um, if I can get get it open and hold on to her at the same time and keep it in camera I don't know if that's gonna fit oh yep it does fit in there huh. now that I didn't pre-plan now if I push it all the way in you can see she's gonna be off-center so, what I need to do is get my, pull it out a little bit and, and see how much border I've got right here. I need to make that bigger. I don't know how much I've got as far as room goes to do that. It's going to show something that's on the paper, obviously, I can see. Now, let's try this again. Because you want to hold it where it's going to be in order for it to go to center in the envelope. This is the hard part of this. And it's just trial and error. Huh. Ah! Can't believe I got really close the first time or second time. Okay. She's not perfect. But... Let's see. Well, crud. I just pulled her right out of there. So I'm going to leave my paper down in there because it looks like it's real close to fitting. And then I'm going to center her. This is even an easier way to do it. Put your paper all the way in to the bottom of the envelope. Hang on to your little girl's face or your vintage photo or whatever it is you might be doing. And bring her in. To where you want her to be in the window and then we can plan on how to cut her out now when you pull it out I see she if everything goes like I want it to she should be make sure you're under that paper that you want to use as your 
as your border. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way so it doesn't interact with the, the camera. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Not a whole lot because obviously that's how it fit in the inside. So, first thing I want to do is get my glue. Let me get the lid off of this messy stuff. This Fabri-Tac, it, it has a mind of its own. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right here just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to double check and make sure I do indeed have it where I want it. And I'm sure this glue will say, that's it, that's it, lady. That's where it's going to stay now. And that's okay if it does. I'll just cut the paper off to, to make it fit better if I have to. It still wants to move around a little bit. I'm trying to get it where it's center, centered on here. Um... Now I'm going to glue her down real quick onto the Project Life card. I'm going to go ahead and just put her on there. Better get around the edges or she'll get snagged on things. It'll probably be like always and I'll have a mess to clean up here. Excuse me. My allergies are killing me today. Okay. Now, I'm going to center that, and you can see that my card is moving, which is weird because I would have thought that glue would have been catching by now. Oh, well. Okay, now we got the mat on. I'm going to lay it down and push. So maybe that will help a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to put it into the uh, envelope and see if we are indeed in the right place. I'm just trying to center it, before, making sure I have the same amount on the bottom as I do on the top, or as close as I possibly can. Okay, let's try this again. Again, because it's not stuck, you know, the picture's not stuck super well, you wanna make sure you don't let go of the picture. Okay, that will work. Cannot believe it. It's off a little, but it's going to work. Oh, I think I can move it over since since it's um, not completely glued. There we go. Now we're going to glue it for real and hope that I didn't move it at all. Okay. And then we'll trim it up. You know, it doesn't have to be. I'm not going to worry about it being perfect. Again, I said that. Most of the time I don't. I'm going to put a little bit on each corner so the corners don't snag. But other than that, that's all I'm concerned about. And of course, it's going to stick to you because it always does. I don't know if you guys know this. I'm sure everybody does. But I'm sorry I was off camera there for a second. I was trying to get the get it centered exactly where we want it. Got a little bit of glue. If you get that while it's wet and just keep rubbing it until you um, this thing just wants to it just wants to move. Now you watch, it's going to want to stay once I need it to move. Maybe not. I don't know. It's just, it must be the temperature today or something. But if you get glue on your paper and if you, you get it quickly, you can just rub it and roll off the glue as best you can. Okay. Now... It appears that all the glue is gone. Sorry. I'm standing up today, and it's making me a little wonkers. Okay, if I get this right, 
Ah, look. We did. Shocked. There's first time for everyone, I guess. Okay, now I'm going to pull this paper out. And we're going to decorate to try to cover up. I think it looks like it's real close to where it needs to be on both sides. Let's round, let's round the other corner, too, just to make it look a little better. Let's see if I can get all that up in there. Never, oh, wrong corner rounder. Let me see where my other one is. Oh, there it is. I love it when I pick up the wrong thing. Let's see if that's going to change. Well, no, it's going to look that way, so let's just make them all that way. The thing about these old creative memory um, corner rounders, <laughs> they're, they're, um, they all look alike. Now, see, this is not going to be perfect, but that's all right. Okay. See, those are kind of stubby. I might have to make these stubby at some point. Yes, and it is off a little bit as far as being centered. There's more on this on the left than there is here on the right, but it's not so obvious that you can't leave it. Um, so, all right, I'm going to sit down <laughs> and see if I can stay in camera. Let's see where I'm at now so I know. All right. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to try to decorate the front of this and I'm just going to grab a couple different pictures I mean not pictures but flowers out of this container of um, oh that's the same flower that's weird grab the same flower and when I was digging okay let's see nope that's not going to cover it huh now, I like that, but I'd have to manipulate it a little bit and still, maybe if I move it over and up, put it in the right place, maybe it won't be so noticeable. But I could also plop some ribbon or something on there. Bring it down as far as you can. Whoops. And see, you can see right there and you can see right here. But... I don't think that's that big a deal. Maybe we, you know, there's always butterflies in this thing. Let me pull out some of the butterflies. Unless I've used them. I'm digging for the right color. Okay, let's try this one. It might be too small. Yeah, it is. Let's see what else we could come up with. Let's just dig and see here what other butterflies might work. Or we could even try more flowers, but I think that's too much flower. I know they kind of have different sizes of butterflies in these packages that Tim Holtz puts out. Maybe we need a big one. Or a bigger one. It would really look better if we could pop it up off of there, but it would be hard to do that. It would give it more dimension. Um, I'm trying to think what we could do to give it more dimension. Well, I can just tell you, I'm gonna use this flower because it's, it's the only one that's the right color scheme. And let's hope I can get it back in the right place. I'm gonna ink it. I'm gonna fast ink is what I'm calling this. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put some glue on it. I think I kinda know where, where we're gonna put it. And I know that this is gonna give me leaky glue is what I call it. Because it's all different shapes and you gotta hit all those little shapes when you're putting it in an envelope or it will just bend them when they're when it's taken in and out of your envelope okay Let's see if i can clean up what mess i can 
Okay, let's try this and see if we can get it in the right spot to start with. That would be great. Chances are that won't happen. Well, that's, that's not bad. There we go. I just happened to think of something that might give it dimension. I don't want to use pink, that's too bright. Let's see if we can use, move this Tim Holtz thing out of my way. Let's see if we can use some of these. I should have put this lace on here before I put the sticker. Yeah, that's not gonna happen now, It's it's on there. It's on there, not going anywhere. Well, let me think for a second what I wanna do because I don't think I will like the way that looks without uh, maybe some sorry sick. Let's see what that would look like. If I can grab a piece out. This stuff has a mind of its own. Okay. The thing I love about the sorry silk <laughs> is that it does have a mind of its own, but you don't even have to, you don't have to think about how you want to put it on there. You just put it on there because it's, it's going to be the right, it's going to look right pretty much any way you put it on there. I say that now and I probably won't get it on there right. But you could just put it up, you know, just like lay it along there and, um, and just glue it down. We could put it across the bottom if we wanted to do that. But we still have an M showing right there. Or we could bring this up, bring it over and do it in the corner maybe. <laughs> maybe is the big word here. And sometimes if you spread that sorry silk out, you know, you can cover up all those letters. But... I don't really like it covering my flowers up as much as it is. Um, let's see if we can find some kind of flower in my little stash here. I'm seriously, my, my bucket on the side here is really low of embellishments right now because, oh, those are cute. This is some like vintage little sh vintage shoes. I don't know if I like that. But when else would you ever use those, you know? And they actually match the flower. And they give a little bit of dimension. Do they look better without the sari silk? No, you gotta have something under there to kinda separate the two. Let's see what this lace will look like. I'm gonna take it off and just take chances here. Because we can always... See, you know, just put some lace at an angle up to where it covers up that M <laughs> that we wanna get rid of. And then put the little shoes on. That's what we're gonna do. I think this is long enough. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to have to, that's the only piece of that lace I have. So we're just going to make it long enough. Let's see what happens. I'm going to give it a little bit of ink. Uh, so we want to just kind of put, put it here in this corner. It doesn't have to be glued a whole lot because, well, you know, enough to keep it down, but... You don't really, you got to make sure you're putting your glue where your ribbon or your lace is going to be because that could flub up real easy. Flub up your project or goof up your project or mess up your project, whatever word you want to use. Now, of course, this lace is vintage that I'm working with here. So it's older. And it's going to ravel a little bit more, probably. Um, but I'm trying to kind of stretch it to reach the corner. Okay. 
let that dry a little bit. Make sure it's actually dried around the edges. I guess we should look, huh? Well, that's close enough. Now, when this dries really good, we'll trim we'll trim that off because that's just a bunch of bulk you don't want in your envelope. And you want to make sure, even if you have to add some um, fray, um, I gotta look and see what it's called myself. This is by Eileen's. It's Eileen's original stop fraying. And you could put it on the ends of your your lace or ribbons to keep it from fraying. I got it at Hobby Lobby for like $2.69. So that's probably what I'll do when it's all said and done and I'm completely finished. And I trim this off, I will glue um glue that down. Now I'm gonna even though this is dimensional, these are some new things, and I don't have the package for these, but they make like little teacups. They make all kinds of different little things, but I thought since it was a little girl, we could use the little shoes. And this is, and it was the only one I had in my box over here. So, aren't they cute? They are cute. I don't know whether I want them to go down or up. Let's see. Hmm, that's a hard decision. Let's just go with down. You gotta make a decision at some point. Now you wanna make sure that your little shoes aren't hanging off or you'll have to cut them off. And I don't know how it would look with this. So I'm gonna push around this edge on both ways, on both sides I mean, while I'm making sure this is gluing down at the same time. I'll put a little pressure on it since it's dimensional. You know what? I forgot to ink her, her little frame. <laughs> See if we can give her a little bit of ink. I just realized it. And I like for it to kind of look, you know, vintage, even though this was one of them. Um, it came out of some project life um, I don't know if it was Tim Holtz or I can't remember I've had it for some time and I thought and she's a homely little thing but you know that's how the little girls looked in, in my time they didn't they weren't all snazzied up right like they are now dressing like they're much older so this is uh, just a little girl that's been playing outside. Okay, now I'm looking to see if we need anything else. You know, the only other thing I think we could put on this one would be like a button or something, and I don't know if I have any of my vintage, vintage buttons in my little dish here. No, that's not, let me. Keep digging for a minute. There's not very many, so it won't take me that long. I had these old, some of these are older buttons. Mm. I might have to clamp these down while we're working on this because they kind of have a mind of their own that they don't want to stay on here. I think it's because of the dimension on the shoes. And it's just the toes here on the end. I'm just going to kind of watch it mess up the little shoes. Let me go to the end. Just for a second. To give it a second to hold them down. While we decide if we want, want a button. I think that looks too lined up. Um... So if we did it, we'd want it right there. So, or do we want a little flower one? No, that's too blue. Man, that's blue. No, the little flower one doesn't look vintage enough. Or what about, do we want pink instead of white? Nope, that didn't take long. No, nope. I'm really thinking one little white button is all we need. 
So, I always put string in my buttons because I want them to look, you know, as realistic as possible. Although, this particular button has four holes and I, I don't like to string four hole buttons. <laughs> That's called being lazy. Um, I'm looking to see if I have another button that we can use. That's two. <laughs> two hold. No, I don't like that. That doesn't look vintage enough. Okay, well, I guess we're going to string a four hole pu uh, button. So usually when I do those, I go down the front and pull them down pretty far so I don't have to. And I just crisscross them. You could do it any way you want, but you know, mom used to stitch them all different ways, but I usually just put like a little X on them. And you go from the top front of the button to the back of the buttons, how you start. And you just string it. This is just twine that I'm using and um, you just put a little X. Let me get it right here. And then you just turn it over and tie a knot. If I can get the string separated. I'm trying to hurry, ladies, so I don't keep you all day. I'm gonna do a double knot why I decided just to do something simple today because man when you do mixed media stuff like we've been doing it just is I you want to cut this as short as you can because it's gonna make it look kind of lumpy now I'm gonna take this off the, the clamp off the shoes see because it won't take long to reshape those little shoes okay now let's decide real quick I'm thinking right here yeah sold and you want to put you know pretty good amount of, of uh, glue on that because it's and it will seep through your button but I could use like a glue dot but that would not hold over time in my opinion so, kind of scooting it over a little bit to get it off that lace because the lace kind of leans the button over. Okay, you know, I'm thinking on the back, it feels heavy enough because if you, if, if you can get away with journaling on the back, um, you, uh, without adding more paper, will will put less bulk in your book. And so, I still got to go back and touch up some of these areas that don't have glue under them. But let's trim off this um, lace so you can get a view of how that's going to look. Let me make sure I'm in camera so you can see what I'm doing. Let me turn it that way. I think I'll flip it over. It's always easier to me to flip to flip it over and trim it. And now you can let this, you don't have to, uh, I'm gonna say it again, you don't have to do this perfect because you know, junk journals aren't perfect. Although I have a hard time with it, everybody knows. I'm working on that to get a little grungier. Um, on some of mine, on some of mine. I don't want to take away completely how I do them because there's people that order them like that. So, you know, a little fancier than grungy. Okay. Really, that ended up being more bulk than I would have recommended for this. But what can I say? It is what it is. So I'm going to put a little bit of this fray stuff on here 
because I can tell this is old vintage. Now this comes out pretty fast. Let me make sure you're in camera. And I just usually let a blob come out because it's hard to get it going. See, there you go. Little bit, and you, and it will not dry. It dries kind of, um, I'm trying to get that off. It dries kind of uh, shiny a little bit. Hope I'm not making you seasick. But you know what? Everybody knows that we use glue. And I'd rather it last whoever it's gonna go to. Okay. All right. We'll make that be good enough. You know, it's gonna fray, even with the fray, the stop fray um, glue. Okay, so we're done with the card, other than inking the back, and I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. But, um, I'm gonna wipe off this glue. It, you know this fabric tag <laughs> glue? It has a mind of its own. When you leave it open as you're working, or if you do, I try not to, but when I'm doing a video, I, I do. Um, it just starts coming out and going everywhere. Okay, let's go find our envelope. Now, what I was going to do, I'm going to wait and see how these leaves play out inside the envelope. Probably are not going to be too good. So, And you, you'll see some of this other stuff, but it, to me, it's better than seeing all the... Uh, now, I'm not going to leave this in this window only long enough for us to look at it because... Um, there's still wet glue. Now, you're going to be able to see some of your embellishments, and that's okay. It depends on what you're looking for. You know, I decided because I didn't like the numbers. Now, see, she's a little bit out of, can you see right there? She's a little bit not centered now, but she was before we embellished her, and that's because of the bulk right here now on the other one i did if i can find it i don't know where it went i must have really scooted it far away on the other one i embellished on the outside so you know if you don't want this bulk and you don't want it to be uneven and i might go back and cut that up a little bit um there's always ways you can fix it and i am going to have to trim off the leaves because my envelope won't close if i don't Okay, so there's our, our little girl. And here's our envelope, which I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll bring the other one back over here because it's not, it's dry. My main point today was just to show you how to alter an envelope. And you know, it's unlimited what you can do. You could put, you know, like I said, you could put some clear, um, I don't remember what that's called. The same thing that the, I just use Project Life envelopes and I just glue them and then I do my shakers. And um, this one would make a good shaker card because um, there's no big elements in it and just the small flowers. But that's not what my goal was for today on this one. Although I might, you never know. I might go back and do that. Um, anyway, so these are our two. Let me see if I can get them in there. Our two window cards. And thanks for coming and crafting with me today. I am really working hard to build my channel. If you could subscribe and give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.